In December of 1980, the New York City Transit Authority pulled all of its 637 Grumman Flexible 870 buses off the road. Shortly thereafter, the Grumman Corporation, builders of the Apollo Lunar Lander, was given unprecedented access to one of New York's worst streets and employed the most powerful computers in the world in an attempt to fix the cracked A-frames of their bus. This is the story of the fight to fix the Grumman Flexible 870 and to design the new Flexible Metro 2. Hi, this is Jeffrey. And not too long ago, I published a video about the New York City Grumman bus crisis of 1984, where the New York City Transit Authority had to pull their entire fleet of 851 Grumman buses off the streets. Now, that video went way beyond my expectations. I mean, it did absolutely fantastic. And as I record this video, that video has over 34,000 views. And I just, I just can't believe how well it had done. And I want to thank everybody who watched that video. And I also want to thank the people who commented on that video because it was a real education for me. Because uh, some people loved the bus, some people hated the bus. And I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer here because that bus ran in many different places under many different conditions. So I don't think uh, there's one answer that fits every condition that that bus ran under. Now, since that video was so successful, I decided to do a follow-up. And in this video, we're going to look at how the Grumman Corporation used one of the worst streets in New York City to develop uh, a strengthened A-frame for the Grumman Flexible as well as to design a new frame for the Flexible Metro. And from my research, it looks like that the problems with the Grumman Flexible 870 as well as the testing that Grumman did uh, to address the problems that had led to the development of the Altoona bus testing program. So we're going to see a little bit of that. So anyway, let's get started in reviewing this article. There's an article that was from the New York Times uh, from 1981 that described how the Grumman Corporation used one of the worst streets in Brooklyn to redevelop the A-frame for the Grumman bus. And so here's the article from the New York Times. Grumman finds perfectly aged potholes for testing buses on a street in Brooklyn. Dated October 10, 1981 by David W. Dunlap. Quincy Street, which rolls and pitches and yaws through the Bedford-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn, may not be the worst stretch of street in the city. But it was bad enough to be a testing ground for Grumman's buses. Grumman used Quincy when it sought to modify its troubled, flexible 870 buses and when it wanted to design its new metro model to be impervious to the beatings New York City's pavement has to offer. This one will stand up to New York City streets, said Robert G. Landon, president of Grumman Flexible Corporation, when he announced Thursday that the company would begin producing the metro bus after unfilled orders for the flexible 870 had been met. As proof of the bus's hardiness, Mr. Landon said that its design had survived Quincy Street. A spokesman for the bus company's parent corporation in Bethpage, Long Island, elaborated yesterday on the test. Problems with weight. Buses had never been designed with any rigorous engineering tests, said W.B. Jones, the spokesman, because until recently, diesel oil was cheap and we didn't have to be concerned with weight. Mr. Jones said that when engineers designed the undercarriage of the flexible 870 to save weight, they did not have the experience with lightweight buses necessary to anticipate the metal fatigue that would, that would be brought on by life on New York City's streets. In December, city transit officials suspended the operation of 637 flexibles after cracks were found in many such undercarriages. As a result, 
we had to actually go out and measure the stresses of bus and doors in regular service, said Mr. Jones. We went to the transit authority, he continued, and said, pick out one of the rougher streets. They picked Quincy. Torture Rig Designed During January and February, Grumman ran tests along Quincy Street using a flexible 870 bus. We put dozens and dozens of stress gauges all over the undercarriage, Mr. Jones said, and ran it around the street full of sandbags to simulate a full passenger load and empty. We got miles and miles of data. These data were analyzed by computer at the company's aerospace laboratories on Long Island. Engineers used the information to make their torture rig, a testing device for actual undercarriages, reproduce faithfully the key stress areas encountered on the street. The findings made by the Grumman engineers in Bethpage were used to both pinpoint the spots at which the flexible 870s needed reinforcement and to help design from scratch the undercarriage of the new metro, which will be built at the Grumman Flexible Plant in Delaware, Ohio. Our pitch is that we know what this undercarriage must stand up to, Mr. Jones said. We're the only manufacturer that does because we were the ones with the problem. Years of degeneration. And the problems of Quincy Street? The city's Department of Transportation, through a spokesman, acknowledged that the street was in poor condition, full of cracks, with bumps and potholes in the roadway, coupled with broken or otherwise damaged damaged curbs and sidewalks. The agency called it an aged street, cut up many times for underground work. Quincy is a quiet street, filled most, mostly with two, three, and four-story row houses. The B-52 bus runs along Quincy on its way from Borough Hall, and a few private cars and gypsy cabs can be seen. The rough patchwork of years' worth of accumulated degeneration and improvised repair does not deter these vehicles, although what nearly amounts to a sinkhole awaits the unwary motorist traveling between Throop and Sumner Avenues. It's been there for a long, long time, said a resident of the block, as he looked out his window toward the chasm in the pavement. It just gets deeper and deeper. I think they called the city about it. And that's the end of the article. Well, that was quite fascinating, wasn't it? The method in which the Grumman Corporation used one of the worst streets in Brooklyn to redesign the A-frame for the Grumman Flexible 870 as well as for the new frame for their upcoming Metro bus. Now, I guess all of this testing simply did not turn out to be enough for the New York City Transit Authority because they eventually pulled all of their buses off the streets in 1984. And I guess this whole incident probably led to the Altoona bus testing program, which is part of Penn State, in which they have an entire bus test track and other equipment to test the uh, rigidness uh, of the buses that are currently being manufactured. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the other Grumman Bus videos. And thank you for watching any other videos on my channel. And as always, have a great day. Bye.